name's Brendan. I'm a coach. Maybe you've seen me before, maybe you haven't, but I'm here to talk about the clarinet. It's an awesome instrument. It was made hundreds of years ago. It is played famously by Squidward on the show Spongebob. Maybe you've heard it. Squidward's kind of a grumpy guy, but I think that the clarinet makes up for it in being beautiful and really varied instrument that can produce a lot of different sounds. So, uh, in this first video, I'm just gonna talk about the parts of the clarinet and making sure that we're all on the same page of how to take care of it, put it together, hold it properly, and you know, not damage it, and how to put it away properly. In the next video, we'll talk about making a sound. So yeah, we'll get to it. Assuming you have your clarinet case at home, mine looks a little different from yours because mine has a zipper instead of latches. Yours probably has latches. Mine is kind of weird. At any rate, whether yours has a zipper or latches, you want to make sure that you're opening it up right side up with the keys facing upward. You see how the metal keys are facing upward? And when you set the case down, you want to make sure it sets down on a flat surface. You know, you don't want your parts spilling out onto the floor. It's a very delicate instrument. Even if you're dropping it on a soft surface, you can bend the keys or damage them accidentally. So you wanna make sure you're treating it very gently and don't lean it against anything that isn't flat and level. Okay, with your clarinet, you should have at least have one of these things that we call a reed. It's usually in one of these plastic guard containers like this, but sometimes it's different. Sometimes they're in little sleeves. The point is it should be this little wooden stick, kind of flat piece of wood. Common brand that most people are gonna use is Rico, which is in an orange box. There's also Rico Royal, which is in a blue box. Those are both very good. So looking at the reed, you'll notice how there's a thin top wooden part. The, the, the top of it is thin and the bottom part is thick. You always wanna hold it with your fingers on the thick part. Never, never, never do this. Never hold it on the thin part. It's even easier to break these reeds than it is to break the clarinet. So if you accidentally brush this thin part, even against your finger or something really soft, it can, it can snap the wood and it makes the reed impossible to play. Now, that being said, if you have a little chip or a break on the side of the thin part of the reed, it's probably not a big deal. The main problem is if there's a split that happens right down the middle because the reed has to vibrate and shake as you're pushing air into it and if it's split down the middle it completely stops working it won't be able to vibrate if it has just a chip on the side it can still it can still work so don't throw it away if you have a small chip on it but that being said the point is hold it down here from the thick part and before you do anything else when you open up your case you want to take out one of these reeds hold it from the thick part like i'm doing and put it in your mouth like this, and I put it on my tongue and I start to kind of lick it and do what we call salivating. Can you do, you probably know what salivating means, right? It's where you're creating saliva in your mouth. I know it sounds kind of gross, but we actually do it normally when we get hungry, when we see like really yummy looking food, we start to salivate because we want to eat. When we get hungry or thirsty, we create saliva. And in the same way, when we're about to play clarinet, we are hungry to play music. So we are going to create saliva in our mouths and just start to Stuck on the reed, like this. And I would say about 30 seconds to a minute, you wanna hold this in your mouth. So the best thing to do is to just keep it in your mouth like this. And while, while it's in my mouth, I'm gonna pull, start putting the clarinet together. Now, the two parts you wanna start with are the bell and the bottom joint. Now you notice there is a orange cork part and there is a not cork part at the top of it. You wanna make sure the cork part is going into the bell like this. The reason that is, is because it's just not gonna work if you try to go the other way. You don't wanna hear that clacking sound. It's gotta be kind of a soft, seated sound. The cork twists in. Now, you might need to do something called greasing the cork. So hopefully you have one of these cork grease tubes. It's similar to like a chapstick, but um, it's basically just a way that you oil the cork to make it easier to twist into the instrument. So I'm gonna show you how you do it. You just uncork it, uncork the cap, give yourself a little bit of cork grease and do one layer of it. You don't need to do a whole lot of it. Think about like if you're putting on chapstick, how much chapstick you use on your lips. You probably wanna use about the same amount, maybe a little bit more, but not, you know, it doesn't have to be overkill. So you see now how you can kind of see through the video, I've got like a thin layer of that kind of oily, coconut oily kind of pork grease. And now when I put 
my bell in. This is called the bell down here, the big cone-like opening. It should just slide on really easily. You shouldn't have to really push really hard. So now you have bell, bottom half, and now keep the reed in your mouth, by the way. We're, we haven't forgotten about the reed. Keep the reed in your mouth. Make sure you don't bite on it. Now we're going to do the top half. This looks like the top half. So it can be easy to confuse the two, the top half with the bottom half. But if you look at the bottom half, it kind of has these like spaceship style or racing stripe kind of four keys at the bottom. That's how you know it's the bottom half. It's got the racing stripes on the bottom. The top half, you know, it's kind of got this more like cell like kind of keys on the top. So just know that it's supposed to look like this. And you might also need to grease these orange corks. And you'll notice that it's on the bottom and the top of the top half of the clarinet. So I'm going to go ahead and setting my bottom half down very gently on the case. I'm going to use my cork grease for the top half now. Just putting the same amount that I would for the bottom part of the instrument. And now I'm going to slide it in like so. Now, be careful because this is where it's easy to accidentally push and the metal keys clank together and they sometimes can even snap. It can be risky. So the way to avoid it, and this is a pro tip right here, A plus student right here, is if you hold down this middle finger key, or just if you just press down all of the keys of the top half, you don't have to squeeze it, but just, you know, lightly press it down. And the point is, is you want to, might be kind of hard to see, but there's this little, what we call the bridge keys, this little rectangular key underneath that gets lifted up. You want to make sure that gets lifted up. So when you slide it down, it doesn't jam into itself. It is lifted up and then it gently sets in. And then the way that you know that it's lined up is you look at these two rods right here and you want to make sure the rod rods are basically straight and lined up. So it looks pretty good for mine. I think that they're mostly lined up. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, I'm talking about this rod here and this rod here have to line up. And it should, again, just once you've used the cork grease and greased up your orange cork parts, it should just slide right in. You shouldn't have to twist it too hard. Now, the next part is this little guy called the barrel. And it doesn't really do much. All it does is it adds length to the clarinet, but you need to have it in order to put on the top part. So you just slide the barrel on, and if it's greased, it should just go on right away. And then, now, the top part, what we call the mouthpiece, looks sort of like a beak. You'll notice it has a slanted back part, and it's got a flat front face with an opening. You And it probably has some screws on it as well. So the first thing you want to do, by the way, haven't forgotten about the reed. You've still got the reed in your mouth. It's probably good and salivated by now if you've kept it in your mouth so you can take it out but again if you're taking it out make sure to keep holding it by the thick wood part i can't stress that enough do not hold it by this thin part so holding the reed in the meantime you've got what we call the mouthpiece the little beak with the screws you're gonna take the screws off for a second and i like to slide it on my pinky like wear it almost like a ring you just need to keep it off to the side however you do it and then you may also notice that there's also a cork on the mouthpiece so we're gonna grease up that cork too, if it needs it. Now, all of this cork greasing I've been doing with this chapstick like cork grease, you might need it, you might not. Generally, if you've done it once, you probably don't need to do it again for at least a month. It kind of depends on how cold it is outside, but yeah, it should just slide on just like that. So now you see, I've got the beak on the clarinet without the screws, I still kept the screws on the ring on my finger, and I've still got the reed. But now, here's the most crucial part of putting the clarinet together. So I'm gonna hold it up here here by the bell and notice how when I'm gripping the clarinet I'm not grabbing it on the metal keys I'm not squeezing the keys to hold it this is what we call this the first safe zone of the clarinet so this is safe zone number one and down here by the bell is safe zone number two so there's two safe zones on the instrument and when you're holding it make sure to hold it by the safe zone always so now I'm holding it by the top safe zone on that barrel and using my thumb, I'm gonna take my screw ring and slide it on. Very, it doesn't have to be tight, remember, lefty loosey, so make sure it's nice and loose. And then I'm just gonna slide the reed underneath, just like that. Hope you can see that, okay? And this is where it gets very delicate. You need to uh, hold a finger behind the mouthpiece so that it's just a ever so thin line of black between you know uh, between the reed and the top of the piece so you're basically lining up the reed with the edge of the piece and at the same time you want to slide down the screws until for me there's like a little line 
that you can see. I don't know if you can see that well, but if there's a line on your mouthpiece, you want to try to slide the screw all the way underneath the line. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. You'll be able to make a sound if it looks something like this, but that's basically the ideal that we're going for, is you want to have the screws under the line and the reed lined up just a hair of black underneath the top of the mouthpiece. And then, finally, when it looks like this, we're going to do the old righty tighty like you're tightening screws with anything else so tightening the screws it should be you know you don't have to over tighten them you don't want to tighten them too much but enough so that you know if i shake it the screws aren't going to rattle and it's you're pretty much good to go after that like now that you've got it set up like this it should look like this at the front all of the circle of the metal keys all of the metal circles are basically in a straight line you've got your racing stripes on the bottom you've got your little cells on the top and that's how you put your clarinet together and in the next video i'm going to talk about how to make a sound with the instrument and how to put the instrument away as well as rest position and playing position so we're going to cover all those things in the next video again my name is brendan thanks for listening and i hope that you can keep practicing during this break yay music